Okay, um, my name is Tumaiho Kim. I'm with the Economic Analysis Unit in of DEED, and I work to support the um, different units of DEED, in particular the Economic Development um, Business Units. And I do, as part of my work, I uh, collect data and I research different areas of interest for whether um, site selection purposes or just um, business information and industry information purposes. And so I thought what I would do today is highlight some of the data that is available on the DEED website. Um, there are a lot of uh, topics available and even as a member of the agency, you know, sometimes I forget some of these sources are readily available there. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's see, here we go. OK, and so you should be seeing the deed uh, website. Uh, let's see. Yes, we can see it well. OK, great. Um, OK, and so this is the main deed website at mn.gov slash deed, and most of our data tools are under this um, data section in the main toolbar. And then when we click there, there are different ways we can navigate, whether the left hand menu or the main screen over here. Uh, I like to go on the left hand menu just because it helps. It better helps keep my place in us um, right at the top rather than scrolling down. So I thought I'd go through a couple of these um, and then uh, highlight some of the tools that we have that may be interesting for businesses. So I thought I'd start with the one that's called data for businesses. And there are many topics here, but uh, in particular, um, I thought I would highlight the wage and employment statistics, uh, but we also have cost of living, um, job vacancy data, uh, unemployment data um, by different areas. But let's look here at the occupational wages and employment. And I thought this would be an interesting tool to highlight because we have different occupations listed and then the amount of jobs in those occupations and then the range of wages. Um, and then at the top we can see that we can choose the different areas of Minnesota or if we can look statewide. Um, we can also search by job title or if we don't have a particular title and we just want to look into particular types of occupations, we can do that as well. So for example, um, suppose I go production occupations, then the list updates to the occupations in that category, and I can see a range of wages for um, that job class. So for example, machinists, we can see that the lowest 10% uh, of machinists learn earn about $20.61 an hour and then um, all the way up to the, the 90th percentile, meaning um, the 90% uh, of the, the top 10%, let's say, um, earn $37.02 um, an hour. So if you were setting wages, this gives you an indicator of the range that exists for that region. Um, and in particular here, I chose Minnesota, but if we were looking say in Northeast Minnesota, then we can also see the range that's relevant for that area. Um, so this is the occupational employment and wage statistics. And then on the left-hand side, we can see, you know, the different options. Um, the next area I wanted to look at was the, uh, the economic analysis area. Here I find that it might be useful to you because we take data from many sources, such as uh, federal statistics the, um, from the Census Bureau or the Bureau of Labor Statistics or other sources, and then we collect them in one place so that it's easier to um, digest. And uh, for example, here I'll start with uh, business expansions. This uh, data visualization shows 
recent business expansions, and they're not all the expansions in the state, but they cover those that are announced um, in the newspaper or uh, in corporate press releases um, or other places, and they're the larger ones. And so here uh, we update this list by quarter. And so then we have top level numbers such as the total number of expansions, total number of jobs that these expansions uh, will create, and, and then total investments. And then on the right hand side, we also have filters where you can look for a particular time period, a particular company, or if you're looking at particular regions, counties or industries, you can also make those selections and that will update the list that is shown below. Mind, maybe if you just zoom in a little bit more to your screen, I know individual users okay. can can um, zoom in their individual screens, but okay. it might be a little more helpful. Is this better? Whoops. Like this. Sure. And so here, here, the table corresponds to the map that is shown above and in particular, here we highlight the most recent quarter that we have data uploaded uh, for, and then we have the city, the company name, um, the in general industry, and then if there were public announcements of investments, jobs, or new square feet, we'll include that data. And for each story, we'll try to find a public news source that links back um, to that announcement, as well as a short kind of overview of that expansion. And so this is uh, helpful information to learn what's going on in particular industries or particular areas in terms of business expansions. Um, let's see. And then lastly, I wanted to highlight this compare, this uh, set of products we called compare and in here, we have different types of products where we compare Minnesota to other states, Minnesota to top, um, or rather Twin Cities to other top metro areas in the US, roughly the top 30 most populated uh, metro areas in the US, uh, comparing different Minnesota counties and different Minnesota areas. And some of these have fewer kind of data points, but let's look in compare Minnesota other states as an example. In the menu on the left, as well as on the main part of the screen, you can see the categories that we have data for. Um, and so for example, uh, I'll click on business climate. This one is useful for finding out about taxes overall and the types of taxes Minnesota has. Uh, whether it's corporate income tax or sales tax um, at the state level. And so you can see that we have collected all these different uh, tax um, rates and descriptions for Minnesota. And then if you're interested in comparing to another state, let's say I'll just pick Indiana. Then the other state will also appear over here. So here we have Indiana's information. And for all of these uh, data visualizations, there's the option to download the information that you are displaying um, at the bottom of the page as well at the bottom of the screen in various um, formats. Um, and oops. And then let's see. We also have economy as another example. Uh, for example, exports, for those of you interested in trade. And so again, we have data for the different states, uh, accompanying map as well as um, bar chart, and then we can choose different data variables. Uh, let's see. And so um, let's see, I'm going to stop sharing.
And so I just wanted to highlight some of the products we have, but we do have many that uh, you'll probably learn more about just by simply exploring. Um, but we, this is where we house all our data products and hopefully you'll find something useful in there, uh, but certainly reach out if you're looking for something and um, we can see if we collect it and if we have it publicly available on our website. Thank you. Thank you, Tamai. Um, maybe you could put the main link of the website into the chat so people can can save that on their browser. Um, any questions for Tumai before we continue? There is one question. Um, does this also include companies that are considering moving? Um, you're talking about the public expansions, the business expansions. Um, if if the expansion is taking place in Minnesota, it's tracked in that um, on that page in that database. Uh, so we look at companies that are relocating either within Minnesota, say if they're going from. I don't know, Brooklyn Center to Clear Lake or something, um, and they publicly announce it. Um, but we don't track businesses that leave Minnesota. <laughs> We're sad when we read that, but we don't track that within that database. Thank you so much to mine. And maybe will you stay for the rest of the call if there's other questions? Yes. We are very fortunate, Dee, to have to my. She's a very respected colleague of ours and helps us with incredible resources as you just saw. So thank you so much to my. Uh, next, I have the pleasure of introducing Andy Donahue. He is our state director for SBDC, and we are fortunate in Minnesota to have our SBDC be part of our state agency. I'm gonna, Andy, do you wanna share your the, the slides or do you want me to share them? What's easiest? Why don't you share them? And then at the end here, I'll share just a resource that we have um, through our SPDC net. So that'd be great. Perfect. Thanks, Neela. And good afternoon, everyone. A uh, pleasure to be here. And as Neela mentioned, you know, we are part of the Office of Small Business and Innovation through DEED itself. It's a fund where, you know, we're part of a state resource, part of the SPDC nationwide. You know, we have 63 networks um, around the country and only seven of them are currently involved under state government. We're grandfathered in under the SBDC and SBA charter as a state resource partner where most of the SBDC networks are tied to an education institution. This really allows us to further our mission and define the, the entrepreneurial ecosystem, but also really tying in a variety of different um, state partners such as trade and finance and SSBCI and market research. So. We're able to encompass a variety of different things that really do lead to our success throughout the state of Minnesota. So happy to, you know, reintroduce a little bit about the SBDC this afternoon, but also really talked about market research and a lot of the areas in which our SBDCs around the state can provide that market research and assistance for not only you and as you know professionals, but also uh, your entrepreneurs across the state. So just a quick recap, you'll see there on the left, these are our nine regions that are tied to the SBDC throughout the state, all geographically based that cover you know, anywhere from a couple of counties all the way up to 19 counties you know, statewide in some of our different regions. This, this team of nine regional centers, we have nine regional directors um, that cover you know, just a variety of different resources along with a variety of different satellite offices within the regions to really promote entrepreneurship and really help define that ecosystem here throughout the state. On the right there, you'll just see a, a, just a small snapshot of some of the services that our SBDCs uh, will provide from business plan development, uh, which is one of our bread and butter, you know, tools that we use. And I'll talk about that here in a moment, along with financial projection and analysis, manufacturing technology, all the way down to market research help. So we're blessed to have a wide scale team throughout the state, but also a variety of different partners that help supplement a lot of our services, but also really define that ecosystem here throughout the state. So next slide, Neela. And I just wanna kind of recap real quick about where we've been here throughout the first part of 2024. It's hard to believe that we're already in July and we've already had the first six months of activity. 
as you can see, we've had really a, a general increase of SBDC services statewide compared to where we were at this time last year in 2023. So uniquely, we've we've served over 3,056 unique clients, you know, through all parts of the state, ranging from anywhere to our main street businesses, you know, restaurants, you know, studios, coffee shops all the way to manufacturers, food-based assistance, and so on. So a wide variety of different clients serve in that 8% increase year-to-date compared to last year. And the same really goes for consulting, the hours of consulting, just based on you know the clients that we've served and the increase in number of businesses started are all the way right now through um, June here. The one um, area that is really impressive considering we have uh, a lot of economic uncertainty with you know raising interest rates, you know, terms from some lenders that are decreasing, you know, lending amounts that might be smaller is really our capital formation. And we've seen a 37% increase, you know, compared to uh, this time last year. And that really goes to the resolve in a lot of the, the really in-depth work that our consultants across the state have done on developing not only uh, working with entrepreneurs that develop solid business plans, but really looking at the financial projection piece and how that has really been um, an area that our SBCs across the state has increased their presence on is a lot of our different skill sets. We're seeing that access to capital, you know, increase. And, you know, it, it, we're not, you know, where we want to be, obviously, because there's still that, that gap for, you know, capital throughout the whole state. But we're seeing an increase of different activities and, you know, partnering with a variety of different lenders, CDFIs. Um, and so on to making sure that we can try to get access to capital for all entrepreneurs at any stage of their life cycle. A uh, couple of the underserved activities that we've been focusing on are some of our rural activities in greater Minnesota, tribal and indigenous consulting, working with our tribal nations across the state, developing and looking at different marketplaces that cater towards the international experience with different demographics that we serve. Obviously, we've talked about child care resources quite a bit over the last year to a couple of years. So working in partnership with DEED and a variety of our other external partners about bringing more child care availability to working families. But then also looking at different training programs that are specialized to you know, help those entrepreneurs, whether it's a business planning 101, financial projections, underserved demographics. We're looking at a variety of different programs that can really promote and enhance that entrepreneurial experience itself. So next slide, Neela. So two things I really want to cover here in the short time, very similar to what Tumaya was talking about, is different tools that not only that what Deed had, but also tools that we have within the SBDCs that are available not only within our regional centers, but are available to entrepreneurs at any point. So business planning, there's so many different business planning tools and softwares out there. These are just a variety of different tools that our SBDCs use as general templates, general tutorials, and how we can get some of that access to um, business planning for entrepreneurs and where their journey is. So the first one is liveplan.com. This is a business planning tool in which you can certainly use for a cloud-based platform. So you can have multiple users working on a, the same business plan, whether it's an entrepreneur and a consultant, whether it's an entrepreneur and maybe you know a business partner, they can work together on a cloud-based software to create the business plan that does detail some financial projections you know, internally for it. One of the subsets of Live Plan is a software or website called bplans.com, which gives sample business plans to entrepreneurs and those are looking for some of those general ideas. Ideas. This has been going on for a number of years, and I've used this personally when I was a, a small business consultant in Wisconsin, where a lot of times entrepreneurs just need that idea phase. What do I include in the business plan? And what do I need to be looking at as I start thinking about and developing my business? So this gives actual real life businesses and examples of business plans that have happened throughout the nation and just give sample ways and how a business plan can come to life from that you know, entry point all the way through the um, creation of the business plan that you would present to a financer or whomever it might be. Another tool that a couple of our SBDCs use is through Gale Business. It's just a business plan builder, very similar to Live Plan, where it allows you to build the business plan from the ground up, it gives you more of that drop down feature where you can create different buckets, bring different components of the plan from market research to financial projections to operations to life. 
it's a fairly easy you know program to use it um that's available to any entrepreneur uh, there are a variety of different subsets that are tied to that where you can look at some different financial projections and market research as well but the majority of the the plan the gale business itself is really that business plan builder um software and cloud-based program that you can access and last but not least is you know the sba small business administration has just a variety of different tools and resources and how do you plan your business from you know business plan templates to examples that might be up there in different ways and how the sba can be of assistance to an entrepreneur a lot of the resources that obviously that we'll use through our sbdc's come from the sba but then also as a tool and resource and how we can get um, a business up and running for any entrepreneur so for the business planning aspect those are just a few snapshots a lot of the market research tools itself is, are are the fun items that our SBDCs and consultants are able to use. So just a few different tools that some of them have the accessibility to. Not all of our SBDCs have the same access, but um, they all for sure have access to Vertical IQ, which is uh, similar to what was called, I or is called IBIS World, where it gives us industry reports that highlight different characteristics and trends and sales projection data. This is something that our national association through the um, America's Small Business Development Center, you know, worked with all of our regional centers and all our networks to get access to. And it provides that PDF snapshot, really fine detail about industry reports that can really define industry characteristics and trends. But then also look into that, that really in-depth projection data that can help define a lot of the financial projection work that our consultants do. We have also access to FIRST Research, so similar to Vertical IQ, but also provides a lot of that financial information. Uh, Data Axel, which was formerly known as Reference USA, it's gone through a couple of different iterations, but it can pull up some prospector lists, um, really in-depth competitor information, especially if you have an entrepreneur that's looking to enter a new market. They're able to geo-market uh, it a little bit and figure out who are those competitors based on sales data, geographic locations, um, number of employees, and a variety of different information to find out who those competitors are and if it's a smart way to market or into that market itself. Um, also can really utilize you know, NAICS and SIC codes to you know, scrub that data a little bit deeper. BizMiner is another tool that our SBCs have. Um, this really gets into that financial information by industry sector class and geography but they can also provide potential valuation reports for your business personally you know biz minor is one of those probably best kept secrets that we have where a lot of you know individuals or entrepreneurs that are looking to expand their business into the, the next stage that need that in-depth um, financial information about industry trends and industry averages we are able to pull that information up um, through those sectors itself um, ESRI, ESRI, a lot of times this is tied to an economic development office or a university, but it can also provide demogra demographics, traffic counts, market potential, and what are called leakage reports, which really identifies the best potential spot for a business or industry to go in. This is one of my, probably my personal favorites from my old consulting uh, work that I did in Wisconsin, where you can really analyze where a business might have the best potential, you know, on a downtown corridor, whether it should be on a main street or a different road, um, based on traffic patterns and a variety of different sales data that it's tied to it, especially if you have two communities that are right next to each other that have different market potential. And then the final tool that our SBDCs all have and then we use is called SBDC Net. And I'm gonna show you just a little bit on this webpage here in just a moment. But this is more of an internal national clearinghouse that pulls a lot of market research data. A lot of what I, I just mentioned here between Vertical IQ and BizMiner, but it pulls into one encompassed source that we can reference and then we can order uh, at no cost to you um, for any entrepreneur, depending on what type of industry that they are looking for. So Neela, I think I should be able to share my screen here. I'm gonna try it. Give me a thumbs up, Neela, if you can see it. Perfect, great. So there's two facets to SBDC Net. There's a public facing aspect that you can look at that anybody has access to just at www.sbdc.org. 
So this is our national clearinghouse um, that is part of our SBDC nationwide network that all our SBDCs have access to, but then the general public has access to as well. And it does provide just general information from it. So what it does is really details, you know, a variety of different um, business opportunities that are out there all the way from AI down to starting a business, SEO, you know, veteran-owned small business resources, but it pulls up a variety of different industry links, you know, depending on the industry that you're looking at. So this pretty much defines the top NAICS codes that are out there currently, you know, all the way from medical and health up back up to the beverage, food and beverage industry, construction, and so on. But it can order also, you know, at your fingertips, just bland, basic market research reports. Now, this does not get into the in-depth aspect of what our SBDC net and SBDCs can order, but it gives you more of a high-level overview of trend data, what's happening from a nationwide perspective. It sometimes will reference, depending on what state you're in, um, a little bit of state information, but a lot of this market research um, from the you know public-facing aspect of it will tied to more of the industry trends from a national perspective. If you are looking to get more, you know, in-depth, you know, localized data, either state or regional, that's where our SBDCs can come into play and be able to um, order that information for you. So you'll be able to get customized um, market research reports. But there's a variety of public facing information that you have, you know, that you can do from just general topics to business snapshots, to industry links, and so on and so forth. So my recommendation for SBDC Net is if you are looking to get some localized data um, from our SBDCs is to contact your regional office. And Neela, if you don't mind sharing um, the PowerPoint one more time. These are all the contacts um, for your local offices itself. So in the Northeast, that's hosted by the Northland Foundation, we have Vicki Hagberg. Uh, the Northwest, you know, corner of the state, by, sponsored by the Northwest Minnesota Foundation. We have Phil Knutson, North Central with Central Lakes College, Katie Hepner, West Central M State Community is in Carlstrom and so on, all the way down. So whichever area that you are in, um, our SBDCs will be able to pull a lot of this data for you from vertical IQ, biz minor, but then also the SB, SBDC net um, clearinghouse that we have to get that customized information for you. Um, and really the, the way they have it, we can really order anything and everything through SBDC net that you might be looking for. So if you think it's kind of a crazy you know, idea that you might have, or if you have an entrepreneur that's looking for really detailed information, just contact our lo your local SBDC and they'll be able to take a look at that for you. Now, forewarning, there is usually probably a 30 to 45 business day response currently because of the volume that they have. So if you are looking for some time sensitive information, one of the other tools that our SBDCs have is probably the best bet. But if you do have some time where you're not in a hurry to get some of this information, we can order it through our clearinghouse and get that information provided to you. So with that, I know there's a few questions in the chat. We can either save now or later, whichever ones works the best. We we can take questions now, and then we'll do some updates from our partners. Hey, Andy, this is Ian, hey, Ian. at the um, West Central SBDC. Can you can you repeat what you just said about a, a waiting period? Because I know it doesn't take 30 to 40 days to get into the local SBDC office. No, 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 yeah. Local SBDC offices, you can get that pretty much immediate. But if, when we are ordering information from the SBDC net clearinghouse, that's where it might take that 30 to five, 45 day business period itself. So, Ian, I'll just use, use an example. So, if an entrepreneur goes into the Moorhead office of the West Central region, talks to Ian or Amy or any of the consultants, they can order that information immediately. And then what will happen is based on that information, um, email confirmation will go to that consultant. And then once the data is scrubbed and pulled from the clearinghouse, that information will be sent back to that business consultant. And they'll be able to either forward that information to that entrepreneur or client that we have, or sit down in a one-on-one -on -one meeting and um, review that information together. Thanks for clarifying that, Ian. The first question we have is, what type of support do you provide to the 8A program? 
Yeah, absolutely. And this is where we, we partner with our SBA partners um, that are, are certified in the different SBA governmental programs. So the support we will bring is we'll bring obviously um, not only the SBA, but also our Apex Accelerator partners in as you know partners in the program itself link any clients that have questions about government contract or any similar programs to those um, industries or those uh, partners that we have. Um, do, you inter oh. no, go do, ahead, you, <laughs> do you interact with Enterprise Minnesota and the Department of Commerce MEP? I know um, a few of our offices certainly do. Um, I haven't had the opportunity directly to to network quite yet, but looking forward to that. I know we've been trying to figure out some schedules here, you know, over the years. But I know um, um, Lyle Wright, our associate state director for this for the SBDC, has in the past, and also our other offices do as well. The other is, uh, I'm surprised there's a lack of business training. There are a bunch in the Twin Cities. Maybe they just don't have the capacity to reach a wider audience. And, and just uh, talk a little bit about business training. We are looking at some different avenues so and how we could have um, business training, both from a in-person and virtual environment. I know many of our offices, you know, really focus on the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, business consulting. However, one of the the areas in the Twin Cities metro region that I've been working on is to enhance that business training option, but then also with the direct one on one consulting that's tied to it. We have some potential pilot programs coming up in the near future, not only for one on one consulting for um, you know communities that might be underserved, but then also for direct financial consulting as well. Um, one thing that we do have is through our Twin Cities Metro office hosted at St. Thomas is our community entrepreneurship program. And they run a variety of different cohorts every year. That is a 10 month training program, not only tied to uh, business training, but also has a lot of one on one student mentoring and one on one mentoring with um, seasoned consultants that we have through the SBDC and other partners. Um, and, and also, if you have questions for either Tumai or Andy or others on the call, just you know raise your hand or put it in the chat. Okay. And Melody, thank you for sorting mm -hmm. through the chat. Melody is a, a member of our small business assistance team at DEED and is a gracious volunteer today. <laughs> uh, the next question was, are there subscriptions for the business plan software tools? There is, yeah. For for instance, with Live Plan, um, you can do a three month, a six month, a twelve month subscription because it is, you know, based on a monthly, you know, subscription base. It does vary depending on if you enroll in one of our training programs. Sometimes those that is waived. Um, however, normally, let's just say, for instance, a six month, um, or I'm sorry, a three month subscription might be at forty five dollars, you know, for that three month period. A little bit longer, on six months might be just a little bit more, and they, they've changed a little bit, you know, since I've used it last. But there normally is a subscription cost, but they they are well worth it. Now, bplans.com does not have a subscription; those are tied to just examples, so you can go access that site and you can look at different um, example business plans on there and access those at no charge. Okay. Um, again, so can anyone access the market research tool or do we need to access them through SBDC? Do we need subscriptions? Again, that's you will want to talk to your local SBDC to get access or to pull data for, especially for vertical IQ and BizMiner. Majority of the programs out there are not free. Um, even for just the general public, so you would need a subscription. However, for especially for vertical IQ and BizMiner, our your local SPDC will have access to that. So my recommendation would be meet with your local SPDC consultant or that office itself. Um, let them know your request and what you're looking for. They will have you fill out um, our request for consulting and help you pull out that information. Then it's at no charge. Next is a concern about uh, contacting the St. Thomas 
um, in March and not yeah. getting a response. Yeah, Nash, if you, I'll put my email in the chat here after I'm done speaking. And if you want to send me your contact information, I'll make sure that I will follow up with you directly. I think that's it. Does anyone else have any questions? Oh, do you guys have anything that is specifically for child care? In respect to market research, I know we can pull some of those data tools that are out there using some of those tools that I described. So I would recommend um, contacting your local SBDC and they'll be able to pull some of those child care um, stats and information for you along with connecting you to Tammy, who is in our child care office um, through DEED itself. And I'll put Tammy's um, contact information in here with our new child care office here at DEED that's helping increase the amount of spots um, and opportunities for child care availability. Any other questions? Do you have any questions as a as a business owner or an entrepreneur support org for some of the participants on the call or for your peers of how to navigate some current challenges? Okay. Um, we uh, we can now turn it then to our other par partners on the call. Um, the Small Business Administration has some updates that they would like to share today. Yes, the SBA. So um, one of the updates, it's the uh, pause on certifications. So SBA has a couple of certifications that um, small business owners can apply and, and take advantage of. And due to a modernization of the portal, uh, the certifications will be on pause. So this is going to start on August 1st all the way until mid I'm sorry, until early September. So SBA is advising new or prospective applicants to wait to apply for those certifications until the update uh, it's done. Businesses that are already certified will not be impacted by the pause. And, you know, the certifications that will be affected will be those that are through the SBA. That will be like uh, the woman-owned small business certifications, the economic disadvantage woman-owned small business certification, the 8 a program, veteran small business, the service disabled veteran owned small business, and the hub zone certification. SBA will be uh, providing more information on, on this cost pretty soon. Um, the SBIR tour. So the SBIR tour, it's coming to Minneapolis. This is a tour that SBA is doing all over the states um, or dates. They're going to be here on July 19th. Um, it's going to be at the um, University of Minnesota, and there is a $50 fee, but you'll have snacks, coffees, lunch, everything It's covered with that $50. The SBIR tour, it's going to focus on the grant program for research and development, and this is for technique, technical focus small businesses looking to fund research and development or prototyping operations with the with the potential of commercialization. So this is a grant and you can learn everything about it during that SBIR road tour. I see that the link was posted in, on the chat and people can go there to uh, to register. When it comes to SBA disaster loans and deadline, um, right now SBA um, it's working with FEMA. And basically, they are looking at um, they're doing the surveys uh, for the Mankato area. I believe there's 22 uh, counties that they're serving right now, and more information will be coming up about that disaster. Um, another disaster that it's uh, still accepting applications will be the drought. Uh, disaster that was way back in the winter. Um, those businesses that were hurt because of the lack of snow, there's a, a 
there is a uh, SBA disaster loan and the deadline it's July 31st. So they will have until then to apply. And if you have um, any questions, if anybody has any questions about those disaster loans, they can contact SBA and I will put in or email in the chat. They can email us. We can definitely send information. Also, they can follow us on social media, LinkedIn. We are always post posting updates on anything related to the SBA on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you for those updates. Does the Minnesota Chamber have any updates they'd like to share today? Nothing major from us. Just really want to emphasize that the SPDCs are such a great resource and the deed data is a really great resource. It's something that we've used a lot. Um, we recently put out our 2024 state of business retention and expansion, trying to look at where businesses are expanding and use part of their data on that. So I encourage you guys to take a look at that. And then we also have some resource guides on funding, exporting, um, and then also some workforce resources. That's it from us. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, once again, this is an opportunity for you as businesses to ask questions of each other or to the, the subject matter experts on the call. If there's any questions, put a, please raise your hand or put them in chat or we will give you some time back. As we're, we're giving it a few more minutes here to, to see if there's other questions. Um, just want to thank again to Mai and Andy for sharing their, their knowledge and their resources today. Melody for helping host and for all of you for taking time out of your day um, to join us. If there are topics that you'd like to hear in the future, please put that in the chat so we can make sure we're bringing you the relevant topics that are of our interest to you. And once again, all of these are uh, recorded and on our website for you to look at the uh, videos from past months and and use that as an, an additional resource. All right, I, Melody, do you see anything else? Oh, we do have. Looks like we have one oh, question yep. coming in. Anish, Is there one. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, there. Well, there's a couple. Will you be sending the slides out so we can access the link? Amazing list of resources. What are good ways for you all use to recruit entrepreneurs? Okay. There, those are a few questions here. Um, we aren't sending the slides out. I think Andy and Tumai might have put some of the links in the chat. Um, the recording will be on the website so you can see what those links are. A lot of the, the links um, for Andy, you would just contact a, your regional small business development center. And um, th that's the, the best way to go about uh, those resources. Um, and then let's see, is it An Anish? Do you, do you, you have your hand raised? Did you have a question? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, uh, just a general question. Uh, I'm an engineer uh, by profession. Um, if somebody had to start a brand new business in the state of Minnesota, uh, no matter what that business be, food, education, doesn't matter what that business be, what are the minimum requirements that they face or they come across? Because uh, I recently bought a business and uh, uh, that business has been around for 36 years and uh, it was brought to my attention only recently that that business had to be licensed or exempt uh, by Office of Higher Education and it caught us by surprise even though that business has been around for 36 years. Um, any training organization that is currently in the state of Minnesota falls under that statute, which means 99.99% of those businesses have to be either licensed or exempt. Um, a legislature passed a new update to that statute. Um, I don't know how that went through uh, the approval, but now the statute made it even worse where it says any business that is present in the state of Minnesota has to be licensed, which means 
if you stretch the interpretation, which means that it could be the Abbots, the Medtronics, the Honeywells, any business that offers any training whatsoever has to be licensed or exempt. That is just outright uh, capricious and arbitrary. So my question not only applies to where we stand, but applies to the, the professionals or the experts here is how are you guiding a new business owner who sets up their business and then falls on their face down the road, finding out that they didn't meet the legalities, similar to what I am facing right now. So from the SBC perspective, this, this would be new information that you presented. I, I haven't heard about this before about now, are you talking about internal training that a, a corporation or business might be doing for employees or to the general public? Both. Again, the interpretation is left up to our OHE. Okay. We, we currently have a litigation going on against OHE, and I don't need to necessarily dive into that discussion. I've been fighting the battle for the last two years. Um, but again, my, my question is not just for myself. My question is any business that starts today what are their obligations to the state of Minnesota? Because again, if they run further and then all of a sudden this roadblock shows up, they, they, you know, it's, it's going to be definite, difficult. Last two years have been hell for me. I, I think before we could offer any feedback on that, we would need to at least know a little bit more about the interpretation and the, the law that's out there. Because just because this, I think, for most of us, this would be new information that we've heard for the first time because this is not information that I've been um, that I've heard before. So I, I did just follow you or send you an email as well about a follow up. So if you have any information you should, that you could send to me, that would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, and again, let me just let me clarify. I'm not trying to uh, you know, put my agenda. Velcro and the stuff that is not like a toy that a kid would. I'm not trying to put my agenda in in here. I'm trying to identify if. If to, tomorrow, if I had to start a jewelry business or day after tomorrow, somebody had to start another business, what are the minimum requirements? Well, you drive on the road, you have to have a driver's license and maybe an in, a car insurance. But what are the minimum requirements that are out there that your digital uh, tools that are digital business tools or the fat book that I have in front of me, the B Minnesota Business Guide uh, that that has some general guidelines, but necessarily doesn't narrow down what are the requirements. So I'm just laying it out there so that future entrepreneurs, future business owners don't run into this. Yeah, what I would recommend is, you know, certainly, you know, contact any of our resource partners, not only the SBA, but the SBDC, um, anybody within the, the Office of Small Business, because every business is different. Every, every business does have its own requirements and own legality, you know, depending on what type of business it is. So, I certainly welcome a, you know, a conversation as well if there is, you know, other avenues, but my recommendation would be certainly contact your local SBDC just so we can at least get some more information on what that business is and we can steer you down the correct path. Thank you. And, and also would be willing, our small business assistance team works with multiple agencies within the state. And so if we could you know, uh, please reach out and we can set up a private one-on-one -on -one with you to learn more about your situation and and dig deeper into what um, the challenges are that you're facing. I did put in the chat uh, just the, a basic five step to starting your business with some hyperlinks. This was in partnership with SBDC and our Small Business Assistance Office and the Office of Secretary of State um, to help navigate. But once again, it's at a higher level, um, but hopefully some information there will will uh, be useful for for businesses. We're trying to make it easier for you, but we need to know the challenges be, so we can address them. So I appreciate you being uh, sharing your your frustration and and we will learn more together about that. Again, thank you for your patience. Yes. And understanding. Any, anything. Uh, Janet, you have a question. I don't, I don't see the full name. Um, yeah, it's Janine Hill, Janet Hill. Um, I just had like a comment for Anish. Like his comment was more of like, how do you become familiar and what's your obligation to the state? 
And um, like I'm in childcare and we do have like one exemption and I found myself in a similar position that you did recently um, where I attempted to, um, I have a childcare center that offers co-working and I was attempting to have my business operate under the three hour exemption clause within the statue of um, rule three. So my advice to you in reference to like what you're obligated to the state is to really just know the legislation and the rules from the local and the state level within the business like niche that you're in. And that would be like what I would expect in reference to any assistance from any like community partners or like the SBDC um, is just to know the laws, um, not only at the state level, um, not only your obligated obligation to Minnesota, but then also your obligation to your local municipalities as well. That's a good point. Thank you for, for jumping in and sharing that. Melody, any other questions in the chat or do you think we've addressed all of the questions? I just want, uh, Christina is asking, do you have any idea how long the SBA will pause the certification applications? Oh, it was answered. They'll be paused for about six weeks while they update the portal. I apologize. Um, yes, this is SBA. So it will be from August 1st until early September. Thank you. And this is also the SBA. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, so we do a one hour class, steps for starting a small business. It has been very well received because it's very simple to to follow. So we basically provide the links of where people can go and, and get the basic things to get their business up and running. Good to know. I do. Just a reminder that there are a lot of resources across Minnesota. And so business owners, though, I know it's it's frustrating and um, you have a lot of grit and tenacity. There are people here that are wanting to serve you and to help you and make your journey a little easier. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you once again to Maya and Andy and Melody and all of you for attending and, and taking some time for today. Once again, please let us know other topics that you might be interested in and hope to see you next month on the second Tuesday at two o'clock. Uh, for the next Minnesota Small Business Call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.